Sonic races around the green hills, running and jumping to save all of the animal critters captured by the evil Robotnik. Soon, Robotnik gets word of an animal trying to fight back against him from the badniks. Robotnik doesn't really think much of it, and decides he'll make his way to go and squash this insect himself. He deploys his massive wrecking ball and flies over to the Green Hill Zone to take out the animal. Sonic is just about to leave Green Hill when Robotnik flies up to meet with him. Sonic and Robotnik meet for the very first time, and Sonic asks Robotnik if he's been the one to steal all of these animals and turn them into robots. Robotnik is pretty proud of himself for this actually, and laughs out saying that he is indeed the one behind this mess. And this little hedgehog must be the one trying to foil his plans. He's not going to let this stand and swings his wrecking ball right at Sonic to take him out. Though once the ball swings at him, the hedgehog disappears. Robotnik wonders what happened. When, Sonic laughs out behind Robotnik, saying that was a neat trick with the wrecking ball, but he's got a few neat tricks for himself. Sonic rolls into a ball and begins to hack away at Robotnik's ship, hitting it enough times for the ball and chain to break off completely and the ship to begin to malfunction. Robotnik can't believe that this hedgehog caused that much damage by himself and flies off in retreat. Sonic laughs that he better run and make sure to jump on a container behind him to free all of the trapped animals. Little animals thank Sonic for his help and Sonic looks over to Robotnik's burning ship. He may have been able to save all of the animals in Green Hill, but he can tell that this is far from over. He tells the woodland animals to go and warn the others about all the badniks, and he'll be going off to deal with this Eggman. Sonic bursts off at the speed of sound after Robotnik to save his island for good. Elsewhere, Goku and Bulma begin their journey to go and find all seven of the magical Dragon Balls. Bulma has already managed to get two on her journey, so with Goku's four star ball, the two now have three out of seven. Good start! The two have a few run-ins with dinosaurs and that, but for the most part, they're making their way to the next Dragon Ball with little to no problem. On the way though, they're stopped in their tracks. Bulma yells out in fear as a robot lands down with a gun for a hand, demanding that the two life forms hand over the Dragon Ball if they value their lives. Goku tells the robot, no way, with Bulma yelling at him what he thinks he's doing as he's gonna get himself killed. The SWAT bot shoots at Goku with him pulling out his power pole and deflecting the laser right back at the SWAT bot. The SWAT bot goes down with Goku running over and saying sorry for killing it. Bulma tries to pull Goku away, telling him it's not a real person but just a robot, since there are more SWAT bots coming in. Bulma and Goku hop back onto her bike to drive away, with Bulma worried as how did that robot know they were after the Dragon Balls? That robot did kind of look familiar, too. She thinks one of her dad's old friends or something had a design laid out like that. She doesn't fully remember much of it, though. The two drive away to find the next Dragon Ball quickly, and find it's across the whole ocean. Goku wonders how they're gonna get out there, and Bulma pulls out another capsule. This time, a boat for them to sail across to get to the Dragon Ball. The two hop in the boat and head over to the island. Robotnik is back at his base when he gets a message from the swap bot unit that they managed to track down three of the Dragon Balls from Bulma, but they destroyed a bot and managed to get away. Robotnik curses to himself since now he has his hedgehog and Bulma to worry about. It shouldn't be too much of an issue though. He's met Bulma before the last time he was talking to Dr. Briefs. She's just a little defenseless girl. He should be able to take care of her himself. He checks the Badnik's cameras to see that the Hedgehog is currently making his way through Marble Zone, so he calls up his hitmen to go and take care of this while he goes to take Bulma. Sonic rushes through the hazards of Marble Zone and is pretty surprised to find some of these boxes left lying around by Eggman that give shields. He must have left them around for all the Badniks to use, but since they're not the brightest eggs in the basket, they wouldn't know how to use them. He seems to use them just fine though. Once he reaches the end of the zone, he is shot at from above by mechanical suit. The robot yells out at Sonic to stop right where he is, as he doesn't want to shoot. Sonic tells him he already did and asks who he is, as he doesn't seem fat enough to be that Eggman. Shu doesn't want to disappoint Lord Pilaf, so rushes at Sonic to knock him into the lava. Sonic is able to jump right off the robot and onto safe land, as Shu barrels right down to the lava himself. Luckily, his armor is able to protect him from it, and he flies right back towards Sonic to blast him away. He's shocked to see, though, that the hedgehog is moving around him faster than the eye can see, with none of his gunfire landing a good hit. Sonic blasts all around Shu, eventually destroying his mech suit altogether, pushing Shu out of it. Shu gets on his hands and knees, begging for forgiveness, and that he was hired to take him out by Robotnik. He was just following orders. Sonic can see that Shu is terrified for his life, so decides to let him off the hook for this one. He tells him to just run off and not accept money from a fat evil egg again, or he'll make sure he gets locked up next time. Sonic runs off into the next zone as Shu faints. 
Goku and Bulma eventually make their way to Kame House and notice a strange old man outside surrounded by a bunch of weird bug robots. Goku realizes these robots must be related to the ones that tried to take the Dragon Balls from them earlier, so he jumps out of the boat to go and help the old man. Roshi surprises to see this little monkey boy appear and take out all the badniks on the island with the power pole. The power pole? No way, it can't be. Roshi introduces himself to the young Goku, and asks him if he got that power pole from his grandfather. Goku tells him that yes he did, and if this man knows his grandpa. Roshi tells Goku that he knew Grandpa Gohan very well, and the two begin to bond over the late Gohan. Bulma's boat comes up eventually, with her asking questions about the badniks on the island, and if Roshi knows anything about it. He doesn't know what they are or where they came from, but does know that they were looking for something called a Dragon Ball. Bulma knew it, and shows off her Dragon Ball to Roshi to show him what they are. Suddenly, the Dragon Ball is snatched out of her hand, with Dr. Robotnik having shown up to the island to take it for himself. Robotnik thanks Bulma for gathering these Dragon Balls for him, and that she had better hand over to three others that are here, and he'll let her live. She knew it, Dr. Ivo Robotnik. He's a mad scientist in the community, somebody her father thinks is a genius, but a psycho as well. So, he knows all about the Dragon Balls. Robotnik summons his laser at the bottom of his ship, demanding he's not going to ask again. Bulma tells Goku to go and beat this guy up for her, which he is happy to do. Goku extends his power pole, swinging it at the doctor to bring this guy down. Robotnik is slapped around by the power pole, not expecting this child to have that much strength. Robotnik flies up into the air and begins to rain fire all through the island. Roshi, Goku, and Bulma have to dodge the fire with Goku saying that he can't reach him when he's moving up there. Roshi has a solution, however, and summons the Nimbus Cloud, asking Goku to use it to fly up and stop the Doctor. Goku jumps onto the flying Nimbus and uses it to fly all the way up to Robotnik and smash the barbell over his head to knock him straight into the ocean below. Goku flies back down onto Nimbus, thanking Roshi for the gift. Bulma yells at Goku to go down to the ocean after him, since he still has one of the Dragon Balls. Goku jumps in after Robotnik, going down as deep as he can, seeing that Robotnik's ship has turned into a submarine, and that he's flying towards some weird maze-like entrance underneath the island. He would follow, but he's running out of air, so swims back up to the surface. Roshi tells the two that underneath his island is the Labyrinth Zone, designed years ago to hold a powerful object, which must be this Dragon Ball the two are coming for, so they'd better go and follow him if they want it. Bulma throws out yet another capsule, this time a submarine one, and the two hop inside to follow Robotnik to the Labyrinth Zone. Sonic is just run through the Spring Yard Zone and entered into an underground cavern leading to Labyrinth Zone. Sonic is pretty ticked off at seeing the entrance to the zone, as he hates water. Even as a little hedgehog, he's always hated water, mainly since he can't swim. Hopefully, he won't have to swim too much when he's down there. Sonic enters the Labyrinth Zone and realizes just how wrong he was. This whole place is water. He struggles to make his way around the zone to destroy the bad eggs inside. But luckily, there are a few air bubbles around that he can use to hold his breath. He just hates how he can't really use his super speed down here. He really tries to make his way through the zone, and thankfully, there are parts above water so he can catch his breath. As he's catching his breath, he sees Robotnik fly by overhead, his ship looking a little banged up. Sonic yells out for the Eggman, with Robotnik really ticked off that Shu didn't manage to kill the rodent. Unfortunately, he already used up his fire laser while after Goku, so he doesn't have any weapons to attack Sonic with. He does the next best thing, and flies back into the water to escape from Sonic. Sonic just tries to run after him the best he can, and while he is a lot slower underwater, he can still move a lot quicker than most people, so continues his chase. Of course, he's pretty much going to drown if he stays like this, so he uses all of his strength to spin right at Robotnik and dash him right out of the water. Robotnik's ship lands right on the surface of the labyrinth, with Sonic landing right nearby. He can't believe he just did something so cool like that. He spun and dashed at the same time. He left to use that one again sometime. He looks in front of him to see that Robotnik has dropped some sort of orb. He picks up the Dragon Ball and asks if the Doctor is really doing all this just to get some sort of house decoration. Robotnik curses Sonic and flies back up into the air, slamming against the pillars to send them all crashing down. Sonic is able to avoid all of these of course, but didn't count on Eggman doing this for a reason. He dropped all of the pillars in a pattern so that the ground would crack from underneath him. As Sonic falls back into the ocean, Robotnik snatches up the Dragon Ball and escapes the labyrinth. Sonic tries to spin himself back out of the water, but the pillars are falling over him now and aren't going to let that happen. He falls to the ground with the pillar falling right on his chest, knocking all of the air out of his lungs. Sonic begins to drown as he tries to lift the pillar to no effect. He begins to panic some more as water fills his lungs. He is losing consciousness fast and wonders if he's going to make it. As he falls unconscious, he sees another ship barreling right towards him as he realizes he's not going to make it. 
Bulma shoots torpedoes out of the submarine to destroy the pillars crushing the blue hedgehog, as Goku jumps out from the bottom to save him. The submarine floods back up to the exit of Labyrinth Zone, with Goku taking Sonic out to get some fresh air. Goku manages to save a bunch of wildlife from drowning back at Mount Paozu, so he knows what to do here. He punches Sonic right in the stomach, so he spits up all the water inside him. Sonic immediately sits up in shock. He's not dead? He feels like he is. This guy definitely does punch him in the stomach though. He looks behind the guy and notices a craft directly behind him in the ocean. It looks like one of Eggman's. These guys must be more hitmen like that shoe guy and are here to kill him. Sonic revs up a spin dash and launches at Goku. Goku is surprised and dodges out of the way, swinging his power pole to knock Sonic out of his ball form. Sonic rolls over injured, with Goku telling him that wasn't very nice, and if he's gonna play like that, then he'll play dirty too. Sonic just nearly drowned, so he's not in the best of moods and wants to end this guy quickly. So, he runs all around him, creating after images of himself. Goku is shocked to see all of these Sonics appear in front of him, and is even more surprised to get punched a bunch of times by the hedgehog. Sonic is enjoying being able to move at the speed of sound again, and zipping all around this guy, until Goku is able to finally nail him right in the face. Sonic wonders how he is able to do that, with Goku saying that eventually he just listened to his nose and realized which one is real. Sonic is actually pretty excited now. This guy here really is something else. He's a thrill to fight and will totally keep it up. The two look at each other and once more get him. You're pretty strong. You've got to take me on. Cool. Let's see what you've got. Those tricks won't work on me. Uh, I'm hungry now. The two gain a newfound respect for each other after their battle, and once the dust settles, Bulma comes in to tell the two they need to stop this fight amongst themselves and continue their journey. The group explain to each other what they each hope to accomplish, with them coming to the understanding that they need to stop Robotnik and fast. Bulma and Goku managed to find a Dragon Ball hidden in the Labyrinth Zone, but Robotnik did manage to get the last one from Sonic, so they're back at three Dragon Balls. They take a look at Bulma's Dragon Radar to see where the remaining Dragon Balls are, and find out there's one that isn't too far behind. Sonic does think somebody like Goku working with him will be fun, and asks if he can keep up. Goku says of course he can, and calls the Nimbus Cloud to follow after Sonic. Bulma holds on for dear life onto Goku as they go off in search of the next Dragon Ball. They eventually end up in a village that's being terrorized by a bunch of badniks. How did they know that a Dragon Ball was here? Maybe Robotnik was able to create a radar after using the Dragon Ball he has at his disposal. This isn't good. Sonic and Goku rush in together, thrashing all the badniks they see and freeing all the animals captured inside. The villagers look on and wonder at these two kids destroying these robots so easily, with Goku saving this pig named Oolong from them. Of course, Oolong seems to be just as afraid of Goku and runs away in fear. Sonic hears a kid yell out in fear and sees a motobug rushing him. Sonic quickly spins right into the motobug, destroying it and saving the kid. The kid looks on at Sonic in wonder, thinking that was the coolest thing he's ever seen. Sonic takes a look at the kid and sees that he has two tails, claiming that's super cool and tells him to make sure to look out for himself from now on without him. The kid shakes Sonic's hand watching him run off in wonder. That thanks for saving the village, an old lady gives Bulma the Dragon Ball she has, totaling the number they have now to four. All they need now is three more and they'll have all seven. They rush off to the next location which is the dreaded Fire Mountain. Though to get to it, they need to head on through. Bulma is thankful to stop here as she can finally get a drink. Though, as she takes a sip of a nice cold beverage, the glass is shot out of her hand. Bulma yells out as she hides behind Goku. The one to shoot is Knack to Weasel and his posse, being the dynamite, 
Bark the Polar Bear, and Yamcha the Desert Bandit. Knack tells the three that his saloon is their turf, so they had better drop all their valuables now and scram. Sonic steps up to the rogues, telling them they're dealing with the fastest thing alive, so they stand no chance. Sonic revs up a spin dash, launching right into Knack and Bean, sending them flying away. He tries to launch into Yamcha, but Yamcha is able to deflect Sonic with his sword. Sonic goes into attack some more, but the Desert Bandit is able to hold his own against the Hedgehog. Bark tries to help out Yamcha, until Goku comes in and knocks him away with the power pull. Bark is definitely very strong, but thankfully Goku is as well, and can block all of his hits and dish them back out twice as hard. As the group is fighting, Knack yells out that they had better stop now, or he'll blow this chick's head right off. He has Bulma in a chokehold with his gun to her head, so they had better back off. Yamcha asks Nak what he's doing, as they never take hostages. Nak tells Yamcha not to be so soft, as this is the only way that they're going to be getting that loot. Sonic and Goku are forced to stay still, as Bark beats into them. Nak tells Yamcha to join in as well, but he can see the fear in Bulma's eyes. Is this the kind of pain he's causing people? How terrible. Yamcha tells Nak to go in and have a taste, he wants the girl all to himself. Nak does want some kicks in against that hedgehog especially, so puts down the gun, and this is when Yamcha rushes in and knocks him right out with a gut punch. Bark doesn't have much time to react as Yamcha rushes in with a wolf fang fist, hitting him so hard he goes flying away. Yamcha helps up Goku and Sonic, saying he's sorry for his gang's behavior. They've been getting more and more dangerous lately, so this was definitely the perfect opportunity to ditch him. Goku tells him it's not a problem at all, and he's happy he was a good guy in the end. Bulma gives Yamcha a big hug, happy that he was her hero. Yamcha is still terrified of girls though and almost faints after this. He tells them they'd better get out of here fast and he takes his gang's unconscious bodies to go deliver them to the sheriff. After leaving Mirage Saloon, they make their way to Fire Mountain and are of course confronted by the Ox King, ruler of Fire Mountain. Though, after seeing the power pull and flying Nimbus, he can instantly tell that Goku knows his old master and training partner. He would be happy to give them the Dragon Ball he has in his castle, but it's surrounded by flames, so it's impossible to get to. Impossible, however, isn't Sonic's vocabulary. He tells the Ox King to leave this to him, and he begins to run around the mountain at supersonic speeds. Sonic runs so fast that a wind begins to blow all around them, and a tornado is created around Sonic. The tornado is so powerful that it is able to completely extinguish the flames around the castle, with Sonic collapsing to the ground after since that was very taxing on him. The Ox King thanks Sonic for his help, and that that tornado was very impressive. Bulma and Goku go inside to retrieve the Dragon Ball, and with this they now have five, only two more to go. The group decide to spend a night to allow Sonic to rest, which gets Goku pretty close with the Ox King's daughter Chi Chi, though he really has no idea what flirting is, so he's completely oblivious to her advances. While they're spending the night, Robotnik has managed to get the other Dragon Ball, meaning he now has the last two. He knows that the group has the other five, so it would be easier for them to come to him and retrieve the Dragon Balls from their carcasses. The next morning, the group realize that Robotnik has the last two Dragon Balls, so they make their way to his location. They journey through the Starlight Zone, the road right before Robotnik's base in Scrap Brain, when Sonic is confronted by a familiar face. Sonic sees Shu in his mech, telling him he tried to warn him, but this time Shu isn't alone. Mai and Emperor Pilaf show up to tell the group that they did a nice job getting the Dragon Balls for them, though this is the end of the road. They combine their mechs to form the peel-off machine and attack the group. Sonic and Goku try their best to fight the machine, but the machine is just way too durable to break. No matter how hard Goku punches it or Sonic dashes into it, it just won't dent at all. The peel-off gang swipe at the two, and with the raw power of the peel-off machine, Goku and Sonic are knocked unconscious. Bulma screams out for them to get up, but she is knocked out as well. The three are then taken by the gang to Scrap Brain Zone and are placed in an energy cell created by Robotnik. Once the group wake up, Robotnik laughs out that these guys definitely were thorns in his side, but now he's going to achieve ultimate power. He places all of the Dragon Balls on the ground, ready to summon Shenron. Though, before he is able to, the Pilaf gang asks Robotnik about them getting control of the world as well, as that's what he promised them if they helped get the Dragon Balls. Robotnik tells him that yes, he hasn't forgotten his end of the deal, and turns around to summon a crab meat to the office. Crab meat walks in, and with a few button presses from Robotnik, he grows gigantic in size, crashing a hole in the ceiling. The crab meat grabs the Pilaf gang in one claw, and throws them straight into the sky, never to be seen again. Robotnik laughs out, saying they should be happy he didn't do anything worse, and reverts Crab Meat back to normal. Goku, Bulma, and Sonic look on in fear as Robotnik is finally able to summon Shenron. Shenron is unleashed and asks Robotnik what he wants to wish for. Now, Robotnik could just wish to rule the world, 
but with the Chaos Emeralds out there, somebody could gather them all up and overthrow him. So, it would be better for the ultimate power to be in his hands. He wishes for all seven of the Chaos Emeralds to be brought into his clutches, with Shenron using his power to summon them from the special zone and right into Robotnik's hands. Robotnik now has the power of the Chaos Emeralds. Shenron disappears with Robotnik laughing out maniacally that now they get to watch as he takes over this planet. Sonic tries his hardest to break out to stop Robotnik, but it's no use. He tells Goku to keep trying, but Goku is just staring up at the sky, not moving. Sonic asks Goku what he's doing, but Goku still isn't moving. He turns to see what he's looking at and notices he's staring at the full moon. That doesn't seem to be important right now though, and when he turns back to look at Goku, he sees him beginning to transform. Sonic and Bulma scream out when Goku grows in size, snarling. He grows so big that the container they're trapped in explodes, setting them free. Robotnik yells out as well seeing Goku transforming into this beast. Sonic doesn't know if Goku is doing this on purpose or not, but now seems as good of a time as any, so he rushes Robotnik, nailing him right in the face so he drops all the Chaos Emeralds. Goku transforms into his great ape form, roaring out, and going on a rampage through Scrap Brain. Robotnik quickly grabs his intercom to signal to the Badniks. Send in everyone. Which one? EVERYONE! All of the Badniks around come to stop the giant monkey Goku, but none stand any chance. Goku swipes away, destroying all the Badniks in sight. Even when the Buzz Bombers fire their lasers at Goku, it seems to not even phase him. He's an unstoppable killing machine. Robotnik realizes he's lost here and runs away into a ship to escape, but Sonic is able to hit it one last time, so he goes down, falling into parts unknown. Bulma gathers all the Chaos Emeralds and tells Goku that Robotnik is defeated, so now they need to get out of here, though Goku is too far gone now and not listening to anybody. The problem too is that he can't tell the difference between the Badniks and the animals, so he's a chance of killing them as well. Sonic can't let his friend become a true monster like Eggman, so runs in to try and stop him. Sonic jumps and rams himself into Goku as many times as he can, but he is more durable than even the peel-off machine they fought earlier. There's no way he can stop him. That is until he notices Goku begin to slow down once the Badniks go for his tail. Could this be his weak point? He doesn't really have many other options, so he spin dashes at Goku's tail as fast as he can and successfully manages to cut it off. The Great Ape stops right in his tracks and then reverts back to normal. Sonic is happy that Goku is back to normal, but there are still a few Badniks around coming for them, so they need to get out of here. Sonic grabs Goku and Bulma, running away from here as fast as he can. As they're wondering where to go, Bulma says that they should go back to Kame House, as Roshi knew Goku's grandpa, so he might know what happens with Goku. Sonic runs back to the island, though he is still terrified of the water, so Bulma has him go across in a boat. At Kame House, Roshi explains that Grandpa Gohan did say that he adopted a monkey boy years back, and Goku told him that he was killed by a monster. So, it's safe to say that Goku must be that monster. He definitely doesn't have any control over it, but they should probably keep this a secret from him since it would crush him to hear that he killed his grandfather. Once Goku wakes back up, Sonic and Bulma explain to him what happened minus the Grade 8 part, and that Robotnik is defeated. So, they now have all the Chaos Emeralds. They wonder where they can go from here, when suddenly they see the Badnik herd coming for them once again. Sonic and Goku get ready to fight once more, when the Chaos Emeralds fly into the sky and circle above them. Suddenly, there is a bright light, and the Badniks disappear, turned back into their animal selves. The Chaos Emeralds manage to free all the Badniks, and they fly off again to parts unknown. Sonic and Goku breathe a sigh of relief. They managed to stop Robotnik from taking over the world and used the Chaos Emeralds to free the animals. Today was definitely a victory. Bulma says that she may not have gotten a wish from the Dragon Balls, but she did make some good friends and is grateful for that. She's gonna go and find that Yamcha guy now to get the perfect boyfriend, saying that she'll see them again. Bulma takes off in her plane while Roshi offers to train both Goku and Sonic into Turtle School. Goku is all for it, and while Sonic is normally somebody who likes to go where the wind takes him and be free, he did realize on his journey how there are a lot of strong people out there. So, getting stronger may be what he needs to protect his friends. He agrees to stay here with Roshi and Goku, and their training begins. And this wraps up the events of the first arc of Dragon Ball and the first Sonic game. This one took a long while to work on since it was very long as you can see. I really hope you guys enjoyed the story of this one, as this was really the introduction to the adventures of Goku and Sonic. If you guys want to see more from this series, then definitely make sure to like the video and subscribe, as if we can get 1k likes on this video, I'll definitely make sure to continue it. Thank you all so much for watching, and until we meet again. See you later!